I bought the M1 MacBook Air six months after it came out almost five years ago, and my experience with this laptop has been amazing. It's a perfect mix between performance, portability, and good battery life at a really good price. And in this video, I'm going to do an updated review of the M1 MacBook Air five years later to see if this is really a good recommendation still and where it sits in Apple's current MacBook Air lineup. Now, I do want to mention that I did buy this MacBook with my own money. I use this every day as a student and for creating these videos, so I kind of know the ins and outs of this laptop. But anyways, you can pick up the M1 MacBook Air brand new still for $650 from retailers like Walmart, and they can find them used for about $550 from retailers like Amazon or out there in Facebook Marketplace. I also wanted to mention if you are thinking about getting a newer MacBook Air to check out Apple's refurbished store and the Apple Education Store. You can find some pretty good discounts on these MacBooks and other Apple products as well. I bought my iPad Pro for the Apple Education Store two years ago and I saved about $100. So I definitely wanna make sure a lot of you are aware about that. I'm gonna start this video off by talking about the design of the M1 MacBook Air, which in my opinion looks a little bit better compared to some of the newer MacBooks with this low taper fade design. But on the sides, you have two USB-C ports and a headphone jack on the right-hand side. You have an upgraded mechanical keyboard, so you don't have to worry about the unreliable butterfly keyboards that some of the older MacBooks have. You have Touch ID, and then you have a 13.3-inch Retina display, which has some of the best pixels and color, in my opinion. Comparing this to a newer MacBook Air, you are missing out on a more rounded, playful design, make safe charging, and then a 0.3-inch bigger display that has a notch and a 20% increase in battery life. Well, all those things are definitely an upgrade. This MacBook is meant for work, so let's go take a look at performance. I would say for about $500 to $700, you are getting some of the best performance out there in a laptop for around this price. As a college student, I'm always looking for ways to save money while meeting my needs, and the M1 MacBook Air, I feel like, is that laptop out of Apple's lineup. I mostly use my M1 MacBook Air plugged into a monitor for both creative work and student work, However, I do go home on weekends and bring this to classes and I can kind of get an understanding of battery life. Apple on their website says that the M1 MacBook Air brand new gets 18 hours of video playback. However, because this is aged, you're going to more realistically buy the SKUs with about 85% and get a little less than that. But still though, the battery life on this laptop is pretty dang good. A Windows laptop around this price range typically has about 11 to 13 hours of battery life. So you're getting quite a bit of battery life out of the M1 MacBook Air for this price. I would say you can comfortably get 10 hours of battery life straight doing things like office work. And as for more heavier intensive apps like Final Cut Pro, I'd say you can comfortably get about six to 10 hours of doing things like that. As for actual performance on the M1 MacBook Air, my experience has been really good. I noticed very minimal to no lag and apps will typically load within a second. However, I had had instances where the computer would crash in certain applications. Like sometimes I'll be editing in Final Cut Pro and then my computer will freeze and I have to force restart it. But I would say that happens about once every other week. And I do use this laptop a lot, so it may be a little bit less for you. But I do want to mention that. A lot of pro apps on this laptop too will run just fine. I like to do a lot of 1080p video editing and I haven't noticed any lag doing that. Same applies to Adobe Photoshop. But I know a lot of you use different applications than what I use, so I went to Reddit to see what people would say for things like music production and coding. What I have here is for music production, a lot of people said it was great, however some non-native plugins you'd have to use um, require Rosetta, which is Apple's emulation layer that allows Intel-based apps to run on Apple Silicon, which this is an Apple Silicon Mac. Uh, they also recommend too, finding one of 16 gigabytes of RAM to get the best performance in certain scenarios. So if you think what you're gonna be doing for music production is RAM heavy, you may wanna try to find a 16 gigabyte RAM version of this. As for programming, a lot of them said that eight gigabytes of RAM is enough. However, some said that 16 gigabytes of RAM is what you should get if you're doing something heavy or certain applications. And this kind of leads me into one major downside of the M1 MacBook Air and that's the base model only has eight gigabytes of RAM. However, eight gigabytes of RAM on the M1 MacBook Air is not the same as what it is on a Windows laptop. Apple uses this thing called unified memory and swap memory to kind of help make up for that difference in RAM. And I would say it works pretty well. I had an eight gigabyte RAM M1 iMac that I used about a year ago for a brief period. And I'd say performance wise, it is about the same as my M1 MacBook Air with 16 gigabytes of RAM. 
Where I think it might be kind of concerning is if you have multiple pro apps open and like 10 plus different Chrome tabs and you're really trying to push it, then you of course need more RAM. But I'd say for a vast majority of people, you're gonna be just fine with eight gigabytes RAM, even if you have like two pro apps open and then one regular app and then a few Google Chrome tabs. Apple did raise the base RAM on their new MacBook Airs to 16 gigabytes. However, this is likely due to Apple intelligence, which is predicted to require more RAM, but also they need more of a reason for people to upgrade to newer MacBooks, so that's no reason why they raised it. And yes, the M1 MacBook Air does support Apple intelligence, which is really nice because as a student, I like using it for asking questions on homework and being able to access that quickly was kind of nice. If you want more RAM, you can try to find a used M1 MacBook Air or M1 MacBook Pro with 16 GB of RAM. However, that may be kind of difficult. So another path you could consider as well is finding a used M2 or M3 MacBook Air with 16 GB of RAM, or you can consider buying an M1 MacBook Pro 14 inch. However, you are gonna be spending quite a bit more. You're gonna be spending around $1,100 for something like that. Another way the M1 MacBook Air is kind of limited as well is storage. The base M1 MacBook Air has 256 gigabytes of storage, which is enough if you're a student or just using this for office work, or if you're using more professional apps or have a lot of projects or a photo library, you're obviously gonna need more storage. How I got around this is booting off an external SSD. Now, looking back, this was kind of a dumb decision, but I basically got into a pickle where I originally bought this laptop not knowing I was gonna use it for content creation, and I need more storage. I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a new MacBook. So I bought a two terabyte uh, SSD and I boot off of that. And then my internal hard drive is what I use for school and my personal use. Looking back, what I probably should have done and probably what a lot of you should do is get a MacBook Air that maybe has 512 gigabytes of storage where all your personal files and applications can be stored on that and then buy an external SSD that you can put all your Final Cut Pro libraries on or Adobe Premiere libraries. And that way I would have saved a lot of money, but also not have to worry about this if it gets unplugged, that all my data would be corrupt because the operating system is on it. Another thing worth mentioning as well is you cannot upgrade these like what you could do back in the 2011, 2012 MacBook Pro era. Another thing I'm sure a lot of you are curious about is what about software support on this laptop? And I think you have a pretty good run left. Typically Macs get about seven to eight years of latest Mac OS updates, and then about another two to three years of app support updates and security updates. But because this MacBook is a pretty nice MacBook and Apple's technology has improved over time, especially if Apple Silicon, I think you might be able to get an extra year or two on top of that. But this is just a prediction that I have. So realistically, like let's say you're a senior in high school, you're looking for a laptop for college, and you decide to buy this. I'd say you could comfortably get by for a four year degree with this laptop through getting the latest Mac OS updates and then maybe your senior year of college, you may just get app support updates. So don't worry about app support updates with this laptop quite just yet. Talking about repairs and depreciation, I'd say depreciation is gonna be pretty good on this laptop. There's quite a lot of demand out there for used MacBooks, a lot more than what there is for Windows PCs. And considering that a 2015 MacBook Air currently sells for $150, plus the improvements that this laptop has, I would expect about a $350 to $400 depreciation over the course of the next five years, which is really good for a Mac. Durability-wise, I would say the aluminum on this laptop gives it a really nice premium feel and kind of helps it stand up against drops. But where I'd be concerned about is the display itself, because if you get pressure between the display any laptop that could make it crack. And these screens are not cheap to replace either. Our par cost for just the screen itself is $250. And then you have labor on top of that. So realistically, a screen pair for this laptop is gonna be anywhere between, I'd say 350 to $400, which is a lot of money. So you're definitely gonna wanna baby this laptop and consider getting a case for it. I know there's a lot of controversy out there about cases. However, I do think they help protect against drops more so than if it is unprotected. Uh, where the controversy really lies with cases is how it affects the hinge. Um, as long as you, you know, take stuff like this keyboard protector out, I think you're gonna be just fine. Uh, but you do wanna make sure that your laptop is able to close all the way when you buy a case for it. Next, I wanna talk about upgrades that the M1 MacBook Air is missing out on compared to newer MacBooks like the M2 and M3 MacBook Air. 
I already covered design, however, the M2 MacBook Air brings some improvements in performance, but it does have a downgrade in hard drive read and write speeds on the base model. You have an upgrade webcam that went from the 720p webcam on the M1 MacBook Air to the 1080p webcam on the M2 MacBook Air. You have a four speaker sound system, and then on the M3 MacBook Air, you get an even bigger bump of performance, hardware accelerated ray tracing in certain applications, or at least the few out there that support it. And then you have more voice clarity in the microphones and support up to two external monitors on the M3 MacBook Air, which that's another important thing that I should probably mention is that the M1 and M2 MacBook Air only support one external monitor without a special adapter. All these laptops are gonna be able to run what you need perfectly fine. And I will say though, that the M1 MacBook Air is going to exceed or at the very least meet the expectations that most of you are looking for in a laptop. The M3 MacBook Air, I do think is a really good option if you want more RAM, more longevity or dual monitor support. However, you are gonna be spending a little bit more for that. Anyways, that concludes this video. Be sure to leave a like if you found it helpful. Thank you all so much for watching and goodbye.